What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the top 5 stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade in the third week of January in 2019. But before we do get into that, for all you new viewers out there watching the channel for the first time, my name is Stas and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment and subscribe and follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. So let's get right into the topic of today's video. We're going to be looking at the SPX very quickly so we can see what the 500 largest companies in the U.S. stock market have been doing over the past couple of weeks, and it should be no surprise at this point that after Christmas, guys, the markets have been rallying. It's about two weeks of trading days at this point that the markets have been recovering from this bottoming out point. And for those of you guys that have not been paying attention to the stock market, which I'm sure is a very small percentage of of those of you that are viewing this video right now, but I'll talk about it anyway very quickly, you know, the market has been getting slaughtered from the beginning of October in 2018, right around this point, right? We were at around, you know, 2950 in terms of the S&P 500. We fell all the way down to around 2630 by the end of October. And in the month of December, we kicked it into a new gear in terms of selling. The selling got, you know, more rapid rapid, more panic selling started to kick in, and we pretty much sold off from about 27.87 all the way down to around 2350 in the month of December alone. And I believe we closed the day. This low that you guys see right here, 2346. I do believe this was on Christmas Eve. Let me just quickly um, get closer here so we can see. Let's see. Yup, it was on Christmas Eve. We hit this low at around 2346 in terms of the market and you know as we can see here on a more zoomed in chart we've been on a straight up trend of higher highs higher lows over the past you know two weeks of trading days right all these black bars here these resemble a trading day so we can count them very quickly right one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12. So about 12, 13, 12, 13 trading days. We've been pushing up from that low and we're still in that uptrending pattern. But what I want you guys to keep an eye on and what I'm keeping an eye on is the resistance that we have here on the SPX at around 2620 and the next one at around 2630. So we do see, you know, some potential slowdown in the SPX. We are seeing some consolidation right around this area with a resistance right now, you know, right around that 2600 range. So I'm keeping an eye here guys if we do end up getting rejected by this resistance we could push to the downside if we do end up breaking under the 50 and and 180 SMAs after we do get rejected if that does happen but let's say we bounce on this green SMA we start to break those resistances you know there's going to be more green and more upside you know in the overall markets if that does end up happening because as of now you know, these are some very main, um, you know, very strong technical resistances on the 180 chart here for the SPX. So let's hop right into it, guys. What are these five stocks and ETFs that I'm watching for this upcoming week? Let's start off with UGAS, guys. UGAS is the number one ETF that I'm watching this week. And judging off this 180 chart, guys, we broke a very strong, you know, technical uh, resistance here on the 50 SMA. This has been a resistance in the past. We noticed from that huge run in natural gas back in November, we peaked at 260. We started to downtrend from there. We broke the 50 SMA here, and we haven't broken above it since about yesterday or the previous trading day and the previous trading day before that. So we broke that technical indicator in terms of UGAS. And for those of you guys that don't even know, this is an ETF that trades on natural gas. This 
this right here, this future we see slash NG, whenever it's going up in price, that's when you gas is going up in price. So we saw natural gas held this very strong support at around $295, $3. We consolidated there from about the 31st of December all the way to about the 10th of January, literally just three days ago. And then we got that pop up. We ended up breaking below the previous uh, support, which was now a new resistance. We broke that and we're about at $3.15 in terms of the price of natural gas. We had a ridiculous day this past Friday. We can see up 20 cents on the day, nearly up around 6.3%. So we do notice that you know, judging on a more technical basis here, we do notice that, you know, natural gas is a little bit overbought in terms of the RSI. So I would honestly like to see a little pullback in terms of natural gas, but I want it to hold above this 310 um, support here, which was a previous resistance. But again, since we broke above it now, it's acting as a support again. So if it's able to break or, you know, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? If it's able to pull back and hold the 310 support from back here in you know October and November you know that could be a very good entry point for you guys for a couple of days or even a day trade right for those of you guys that watched my previous video previous trading update video I actually day traded you guys this past Friday for I believe it was around 4% profit so you guys at the top of my list guys um you know with an entry point I'm thinking around you know roughly 45 to 44 dollars if we do end up getting that pullback but let's say we don't get that pullback and natural gas continues to surge up you know the strategy is going to change at that point and I'm sure I'll talk to you guys about that in the group chat you know on uh, DMs and stuff like that and of course you know in the next trading update video. So um, that's what I'm looking at in terms of you guys. There's a couple of more that I'm talk I want to talk about in terms of inverse ETFs. But before we do talk about those, let's talk about two stocks very quickly that I find very, very interesting right now. So one of those is going to be AMD Advanced Micro Devices. Right off the bat here, guys, on the 20-day one-hour chart, we do see a cup pattern starting to form on AMD. We noticed that it held above the 180 SMA here at a higher low point from the previous, and we can see that based on this trend line here. That's a pretty decent trend line, right, guys? I know it's cutting this a little bit, but you guys get the idea, right? We held, you know, we held it here at 1603, held the higher low 1650, held the higher low at about 1730, and now we're, we held another higher low at around 1950, $20. So if we do hold this 50 SMA here heading to tomorrow's trade, trading session. Um, you know, and we start to head back into the 2050 range. I do see some profit margin, um, you know, from around 2050 up to previous resistances at around 2150. That gives it around a 5% margin. But, you know, this could be a cup and handle pattern, you know, starting to form here. So I'd be careful if this one starts to get near, you know, the 21, 2150 range because it very well could get rejected and start to go back down at that point. Or if it breaks that resistance at around 2150, that could be another uh, you know point where it could surge up to 22 dollars, 2250. But I think that's getting a little bit uh, ambitious on this one, guys, because I don't really think AMD is going to run up to 22 quite yet. But who knows, guys? Anything can happen, especially if the market, let's say, surges you know 500 points to a thousand points in the Dow Jones over the next two three trading days. We we might get some volume into AMD, which could push it to the 22 range. But, you know, I'm just going to wait for the opportunity to open up to me. I'm not going to get too antsy with this trade. I'm going to wait until the $20.50 range, maybe $20.75, judge the technicals from there. And, you know, I'm going to enter my position accordingly. But if we're talking on the 180 chart here, you know, very similar, guys, right? We held the 180 SMA support. We bounced on it. We're looking to consolidate consolidate at around 2030 before we head to the next high. So it's very important right now to keep an eye around the $20.50 range in terms of AMD. And I'm going to set an alert right there actually 
right now $20.51 close enough mark is at or above 2051 and if you guys don't know how to make an alert let me quickly explain this while I have your guys's attention so $20.51 what you want to do is right click on your mouse come down here create alert and here at the price make it mark right is at or above which is going to notify you when the price gets at the price level that you're you know uh, identifying here or above the price level that you're identifying here right or if you want to do it the different way where you want to uh, you know get alerted when a stock is downtrending or breaking a price target that's lower than the target that it's actually at right now you would do at or below but in this case I want to be notified when AMD is at or above 2051 so i'm going to leave it there right it's going to put this gold line right here giving me the alert right around this area if it does end up breaking um that point so that's what i'm looking at in terms of amd another one that i'm watching is etsy ticker symbol etsi and this is actually one that was talked about in the discord group chat i forget who brought it up but somebody brought it up i i checked it out and uh, on a technical basis i'm really liking what etsy is looking like right now so we can see guys overall this huge margin of profit was open from 58 dollars all the way down to around $42. That's actually a massive margin of profit, around 25% margin to be exact. And from there, guys, you know, since the markets have been doing well, the markets have been recovering, right? This was from literally the day, you know, that the markets, you know, hit their lows on Christmas Eve from there. Etsy has been doing pretty well, and it's pulled back again recently from around $55 all the way down to $50, opening up that 7-8% margin. We bounced on that 180 SMA, holding that higher high, or rather holding that higher low, right? You guys see that. If I zoom in a little bit closer, it's a little um, easier to see here. We held that higher low, and now we're seeing if we're going to be testing um, you know, the previous high at around $55. So an entry point that I like on Etsy is going to be at around $53. So let me quickly create that alert, guys, and let me explain why I like this entry point for Etsy. So we see, you know, it bounced on this top trend line right here. It bounced on the 180 SMA very nicely, strong green candlestick. But towards, you know, aftermarket hours and towards the end of the day, we started to see a pullback, right? So if we pull back tomorrow and end up going in this direction, that's not going to be a very good sign, right? But let's say we start to head in this direction, but we hold the trend again and we start to push back up and holding another higher low from the previous. That could be a good sign that we're continuing in the uptrending pattern, continuing to around the $53 range, which would hit my alert. And that would be a good entry point in my opinion. But again, let's say we get rejected here, right? We continue the downtrend. We break this trend line. We break the 180 SMA. I'm not going to be watching Etsy at that point, right? It doesn't make sense to watch a uh, stock or an ETF that broke the pattern that you were originally watching it for, if that makes any sense, right guys? And at any point of this video, if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. Let me know. And also, if you are watching any stocks yourself, any ticker symbols, drop them down below in the comment section. And while you're at it, smash that like button if you're enjoying uh, this video and the content that I've been putting out um, you know, on YouTube. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of Etsy, guys. Pretty solid uptrend reversal pattern right now. Looking for it to break the $53 mark. So another ticker that I'm going to be watching is JDST. And this is the bear ETF for the gold futures. And for those of you guys that don't know, you know, gold futures slash GC, whenever they're going down in price, that's when JDST is going up in price. And there's a bull ETF as well, which means that whenever GC gold futures are going up in price, the bull ETF, which in this case is JNUG, is going up in price as well. So we're seeing pretty strong resistance on the gold futures right now. Honestly, they've quadruple topped 
at this 1300, 1295, 1300 resistance. We can see it here, guys. We can see it here, here as well, and here. This quadruple top, and um, you know, this is a resistance, or I think it was a support back in May of 2018. And let's take a quick look at that. See, it was a support back in May of 2018, right here. And obviously, once a support is broken beneath of, it becomes a new resistance. So we saw the downtrend in gold earlier uh, in 2018 we found the bottoming out point here and we formed kind of a cup pattern right here now and we're seeing some strong resistance right at that previous support which again is now a uh, new resistance level so if we're going in a little bit closer on the gold futures here I think you know there is potential for them to pull back maybe back to the 1270 range maybe back to the 1280 range before they potentially could continue the uptrending pattern and how I'm looking to play this guys is you know I'm looking to play JDST this week if we do get this reversal to the downside for the gold futures and we'll know that for sure in my opinion when we break around 1280 right if we start to pull back pre-market hours and you know the futures are open 6 p.m eastern standard time on sunday so you can get a better look at the price action at the technicals you know before the actual stock market opens you know on monday 9 30 a.m eastern standard time so this could give you an advantage, but you know, if they start to push down and especially if they break 1280 guys, I think they'll be able to get to the 1270 range, maybe 1275, which would give JDST a very solid margin of profit, right? We see JDST has been consolidating. It found a new support at around $44 and starting to push up. And at that point, guys, if the gold futures, um, you know, they, they break that 1280 point, they start to head towards that 1280 point and eventually if they do break it JDST is going to be trending up very nicely here it's going to be above the 50 SMA and at that point guys it's probably going to be in the low 50s mid 50s right around that range so you know I'm looking to play the downside of gold futures and if they do start to find support here and do start to continue this uptrend you know that could be a good entry point for JNUG which is an awesome thing about about these inverse ETFs guys they are very risky but if you do play them correctly you can hop in and out of them and profit on the downside and profit on the upside right very cool thing about these and let's say we don't even get that pullback right let's say I'm completely wrong that doesn't happen which again could happen right I'm not right 100% of the time no one's right 100% of the time let's say tomorrow we wake up and we're in the 1300 1305 range you know my strategy is going to be completely different at that point you know I'm going to be trading JNUG because we're going to be in that bull run again we're going to be you know heading up breaking higher highs you know breaking resistances and that's going to just completely change the strategy which is why you always have to be on top of your technical analysis it's super super important so that's what I'm looking at in terms of uh, the gold futures here JNUG and uh, JDST so the fifth and final ETF that I'm watching is U UWT, and this is another inverse ETF, guys. This one trades on crude oil, slash CL is the ticker for crude oil, and pretty much how this works is whenever crude oil is going up in price, that's when UWT is going up in price as well. So if we're judging on the longer term chart here on crude oil, the 184 hour chart here, we can see, you know, all, all of us really know this at this point that have been following the stock market at that, that really just keep an eye on news all the time is that we know crude oil has been getting slaughtered. I think it had like one of the worst two, three months in a row in a 10 year span, guys. It literally lost like 40% of its value nearly. Yeah, like 45% from uh, you know $77 all the way down to around $43 but the key thing here in terms of technicals right is we broke the first resistance of the 50 simple moving average which has been a resistance in the past as we can see here right we were having trouble breaking out of it and here as well and then we broke above the 
180 SMA, 180 simple moving average, which again, you know, that's been a resistance in the past. And the fact that we broke those guys, that's a very good reversal pattern to the upside uh, for crude oil. And now we notice that it hit another resistance from a previous price at around $53.60 to $54. We pulled back and now we're, you know, holding that uptrend uh, trend line that I have drawn out here with the green candlestick on this trend line. So what this really did, guys, this little pullback here, it opened up that margin of profit on, uh, let's see, UWT, right? We can see on a closer term chart here, you know, it opened up from 1375 down to around $12. It opened up around, you know, a 10% margin of profit for UWT. So I'm going to be a little bit more patient with this trade, guys, because I do see some more potential, um, you know, maybe uh, more potential downside in uh, crude oil, especially since it broke this 50 SMA on the 20 day, one hour chart, maybe around like, let's say the 51 range, $50 range, maybe even back down to the 180 SMA range, which at that point would be around $50. I think it does have potential to pull back down to there. And again, just like JDST and JNUG, we can always play the downside, which would be DWT in this point, right? And then once crude oil found that support, started to push back up, we can hop into UWT on the inverse and then profit on the upside. So let me know what you guys think about this. Are you trading any crude oil ETFs? I think they're going to be very interesting plays this upcoming week. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. And I'm going to end the video off right here for today. If you guys enjoy the video, smash that like button. It really does support the channel. I really do appreciate you guys watching. Drop a comment. Again, if you have any questions, any ticker symbols, please drop them down below in the comment section. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I'll catch you all in the next video. If you're in the Discord group chat, I'll talk to you guys in there. Peace out.